Good morning and welcome to Cross Point Community Church. Whether you're gathered with us here in this building this day or you're viewing online, we are glad that you're joining us and, and we are worshiping together with millions of people around the world. So as we gather here or wherever we may be, let us bring our songs and our praise to our Father in Heaven. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. I invite you to stand if you're able as we bring our praises to our God. We're going to start by saying, come all you people, praise our God. God's greeting comes to us this morning from Romans chapter 1. To all who are loved by God and called to be his holy people, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, that you have brought us together into your presence this day, that through the working of your spirit we have responded to your call to worship. We have come from many different homes and different communities to gather together to sing praise to you. We pray, Lord, that you will remove distractions from us and that we may focus on you and bring praise to you. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight here this day. Amen. Let's continue in song.
Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. You have created the world in splendor. You have made us in your image. You have given us your law. You have grafted us into your covenant of grace. You promised to make all things new. All glory be to you, Lord our God, giver of every good and perfect gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Amazing grace. Next week, the Lord willing, we will partake in the Lord's Supper together. In preparation for this, let us examine our hearts to be sure that we trust in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation, and that we believe our sins are forgiven wholly by grace for the sake of our Lord's sacrifice on the cross. Let us examine also our consciences to be sure that we resolve to live in faith and obedience before our Lord, and in love and peace with our neighbors. God will surely receive at the table of his Son all who truly repent of their sins, believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior, and desire to do his will. All who do not repent, who do not put their trust in the Lord Jesus, and have no desire to lead a God in life, 
are warned according to the command of God to keep themselves from the Holy Sacrament. If we live in disobedience to Christ and in conflict with our neighbors, we must repent of our sin and seek reconciliation with our neighbors before coming to the Lord's table. For if we partake of the sacrament in unbelief and willful disobedience, we eat and drink judgment to ourselves. This warning is not designed, however, to discourage repentant sinners from coming to the Holy Sacrament. We do not come to the supper as if we are righteous in ourselves, but we come confessing that we are sinners who look to Jesus Christ for our salvation. Although we do not have perfect faith and do not serve the Lord God with all our hearts, and though we do not love our neighbor as ourselves, we are confident that the Savior accepts us at his table when we come in humble faith, with sorrow for our sins, and with a will to follow as he commands. If you doubt your place at the Lord's table, find a mature Christian to listen to your doubts and concerns so that they can reassure you of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All then who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who earnestly desire to lead a godly life, ought to accept the invitation now given and come with gladness to the table of their Lord. That we may rightly examine ourselves before God, let us seek his gracious help through prayer. Almighty God, who has given us the gospel of Jesus Christ and who has provided a most wonderful communion with him through the mystery of the sacrament, we ask you for grace to enable us to prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion. To all who sincerely believe in your Son and truly repent of their sins, grant assurance of your gracious readiness to receive and bless them in the supper of their Lord. To all who have not repented and have not put their trust in the Lord Jesus, grant a restraining fear of this supper, lest their condemnation be greater. But have mercy upon these and grant them grace to repent of their sins and seek their salvation in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We confess, O Father, that we have all offended your majesty and deserve your judgment. We have transgressed in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. We are truly weak. Be merciful, O God, and grant us your pardon. Let us come to the sacrament in the joy of your forgiving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit, one only God, lives and reigns forever. Amen. Now that we have confessed that we fall short of our God's directives for our lives, hear these words from Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Thanks be to God. Shall we sing, Salvation Belongs to Our God?
Having been so assured of God's compassion toward us, how should we live in order to show our gratitude and devotion to him? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And what exactly does this love look like, you might ask? The Apostle Paul describes it this way. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. I don't know about you, but I know that I can't love this way. I have not, and I will not be able to. But may we, through the working of God's Spirit, be enabled to love him and others. One of the ways that we express our gratitude and love is by giving back to the Lord some of what he has blessed us with. Offerings today are being received for the work of Cross Point Community Church here in Tilsonburg, as well as the Salvation Army, one of our partners in caring for others within our town and surrounding communities. Don donations may be placed in the collection baskets as you leave here today, or by going online at crosspoint.donations at gmail.com. At this point, I ask that you join me as we pray, come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine that has greeted us this morning after the rains of last night. We thank you that it is Sunday, a day of rest, a true gift from you, a time when we can set aside the busyness and work of the week and have time for our bodies to rest and recharge, for our minds to focus on other things, and for us to come together to worship and praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your providence and providing us with everything that we have needed day after day for our food and clothing and shelter. We thank you too, Lord, for the rain that has watered the earth and for the sunshine that you have sent, for the warm weather and for the summertime, for the opportunity for some of us to take time off from our work and possibly visit with family and friends, which we haven't been able to do for quite some time, or go camping or go on a vacation. And Lord, as we do that, may we be able to marvel at your creation, all that you have made, all that you sustain. And may it also be a time of refreshment for our bodies and for our minds. We thank you too, Lord, for the harvest that is being brought in, both from the fields and from our gardens, the produce that you have provided us with. We thank you, Lord, for your bounty. We also thank you, Lord, for answered prayers in regards to COVID. We have prayed for quite some time, Lord, that a vaccine may be found, that it may be effective, and that the, the cases may diminish. And we thank you, Lord, that that is happening within our country, within our community. But we pray also, Lord, for the poorer parts of this world which have not seen this happen yet. Lord, may the vaccines be getting to these countries as quickly as possible, and, and may they too be able to experience the, the protection that is given for that. Lord, we thank you for medical research for people that you have entrusted with the ability to study and to discover things and to be able to bring about things like vaccines and, and health care and the care for those around us. We pray too, Lord, as, that as we see our province and our country opening up again, that we may remember those around us, that we may make sure that our friends and neighbors are also comfortable with gathering together and that we may be able to do so in a way that we still care for those around us. We pray, Lord, for Tilsonburg and for the surrounding communities, the place that we call home. We ask that 
these communities may be safe places for families to grow, to thrive, for kids to study and to learn, for families who are moving into our communities, Lord, we see many, many new houses being built and people arriving. May this be a, a place that they can call home. We pray too, Lord, that you will help us to welcome others, that we may embrace those who are around us, that we may be part of this safe, caring community that you call us to be. We pray for those who protect us and, for care, and care for us, for our, our police forces, for our first responders, for those who work in our health care system, for those who provide care for our elderly. Lord, we ask that you will bless them, strengthen them, and help them in their tasks daily. We pray too, Lord, for the well-being of our family and friends. You know the situations that each of them are in. We pray, Lord, for safety, for health, for strength, and for love to surround those who are, are feeling lonely. Lord, we take a moment at this time to bring before you the names of those who are on our hearts and our minds. We ask too, Lord, that you'll be with those who are leading the Vacation Bible School this week. A number of churches in our community have gotten together to host this. We ask that you will bless those who attend. We pray, Lord, that your word might become real to those who are leading and those who are receiving this word. And may this be an enjoyable week and a week of learning and doing things together. And now, Lord, as we open your word, we pray that you will lead us and guide us, that we may be able to understand what is being brought to us, that may we, we may hear you speaking clearly to each one of us this day. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We will now be hearing a message prepared and delivered by Pastor Reggie Smith. He is a director of disability in the Christian Reformed Church in North America, and he will be bringing our message this morning. Our text comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 35 through 39. Hear the word of the Lord. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. Simon and his companions were looking for him. When they found him, they exclaimed, everybody's looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to a nearby village, so that I can preach also there. 
That is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Some years ago, I observed a survey done for 600 students, high school students in Rochester, New York. And they asked them two questions. The first question was, if you could push a magic button, a magic button to be either beautiful, smart, or strong, or famous, what do you think most of them picked? The answer, they all wanted to be famous. And when they asked them a second question, who would you rather have dinner with? And you know who the winner was? Jennifer Lopez, then Jesus, and then Paris Hilton. At least Jesus got second place. When you think about this text, everyone was looking for Jesus. Jesus was now famous because he was driving out demons. People were attached to his preaching. Everybody wanted a piece of Jesus. Instead of running towards them, he ran from them. And that is strange because if Jesus wants everyone to understand and to get in on his message, wouldn't he have done all that he can to raise his popularity numbers? Wouldn't he have gone on social media and hit all of the spots, whether that's Twitter or Facebook or Instagram? Wouldn't he have taken all kinds of invitations and interviews? Because he was now a superstar. And yet he does the opposite. He runs from it, then running towards it. He chooses solitary than the crowd. What is going on here? You see, Jesus is trying to teach us something about not who he is, but who God is. And when he teaches us about who God is, we're not trying to put up our numbers or to boost up our ego. But what he's trying to do is bring us closer to who God is, the God that has been dying to love us. One of the people of whom I have spent a lot of time reading over these past years is Craig Barnes, who is now the president of Princeton Theological Seminary. And he said something very interesting. He said, you can either live your life in two ways in terms of your approach to God. You can either achieve your life or you can receive your life. If you try to achieve your life, then your constant companion will be complaint. Because you see, there never be enough of trying to achieve your own life. You, you'll continue to see yourself as a self-help project. You'll keep trying to win God's favor, win the Lord's approval. You'll keep trying to do this gerbil in the wheel. If you think that you would just do a little bit more, then possibly you can get God's approval or even Jesus' approval. You can almost in some way try to earn God's love. And maybe for some of us who are hearing this right now, you're tired, you're burnt out. The last 18 months have been brutal. And now you're tired, you're burdened. Because trying to achieve your life hasn't quite been working out for you. Barnes says there's a second way. If you approach God in terms of gratitude. And if you approach God in terms of gratitude, then this will be what your companion is. Grace. Grace will be your companion on your right and your left. All the other blessings, heaven and earth, thrown in at the same time. Because when you try to live your life by grace and gratitude, there's no chasing. There's no running after. We see this in Jesus as he steals away. He goes to a solitary place to lift us up to the Father. Because he's trying to say something very powerfully to us. I've been dying to love you just as you are, not as, not as an achievement, but rather as a gift. 
You see, Jesus' main goal was to be our priest. And basically what the priest does is that they pray on our behalf. They pray for us. They bring us before the Lord. That is what Jesus is trying to do as he is stealing away to those solitary places in order to get on a personal level, on a personal basis with the Father again. He knows that other people are looking for him, but he wants to have an audience of one, not a crowd of 5,000. And what the priest does is that they bring us before the Lord. And think of this as the Lord doing something powerfully in our lives. Let me give you four ways of kind of thinking about that. Think of Jesus on his knees. Jesus on his knees praying before the for the Father of saying that if I bring these people before you on the ground at the human level, a part of the human condition, then he understands what we go through. He understands our issues. He understands our pains. He understands our disappointments. He understands the struggles in which we go through. We don't have to hide it because Jesus comes down to our level. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Or Jesus lifting up his hands, lifting us up to the Lord. Some of us are tired and burdened and weary and maybe we don't have a whole lot of energy for a whole lot of things, let alone for work and for family and for church. Jesus lifts us up in those solitary places because he knows that we ran out of energy. And there's not enough pills, there's not enough PD light, there's not enough energy drink, there's not even enough coffee, no matter how expensive it is, that will get us over the hump. We need someone, we need a savior to lift us up, to bring us up to where the Lord is, who knows when we are out of gas. But also Jesus lifts us up with his hands and hands in debt that says to us, I know your struggles. I know your heartaches. I know your pain. I know exactly what you've been going through. And I'm here to help. I'm here to save you. While I'm here in this solitary place, I'm praying on your behalf. I'm being your priest when you want me to be a celebrity. And I don't want to be a celebrity, Jesus says. I want to be your savior, your Lord. The one whom you call out in the dark of night, in those painful moments, I will hear and I will answer and I will act because I love you that much. Yes, the Lord has been dying to love you. Why do we work so hard for what our Lord gives us for free? So we have a savior who prays on our behalf, who is even right now, who sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He is there praying for you right now. There's not another thing that you can do. Not another thing, beloved. Because Jesus is praying for you. He knows what you're going through. And he knows all of us. As John Calvin said so many years ago, we are all in the hospital of sinners and we need the great physician to minister to us during all of those times when we are out of energy and out of ideas and out of answers. There's something else too. In that same survey, when those teenagers were asked, well, why did you answer that way? Most of those teenagers were lonely, depressed, carrying heavy burdens. And they said something very powerfully. And they asked, why did you pick the answers that you picked? And the majority of them said this. They didn't think anyone was on their side. Hmm. They didn't think anyone 
was on their side. I can imagine for a lot of the people whom Jesus drove out demons, preached in their villages, before he came, there were not a whole lot of people on their side. And maybe you feel like that today. Maybe you feel like there's not an awful lot of people on your side. Yes, family and friends and loved ones and church members. But when you go to bed at night, you still feel alone. You still feel you are by yourself. So maybe we're, might, we're not much different than these young people who are supposed to have the whole world and life before them. And yet at the same time, they didn't feel that anyone was on their side. That is why the Lord has come into the world. He's come because he said, I am on your side. I am in your corner. I believe in you. Even when you feel like that you're still trying to achieve your life rather than trying to receive your life. Oh, dear, dear one. Receive your life again. Open up your hands. Open up your heart. Open up your life. Don't try to achieve your life. And that at the end of the day that you lift up these trophies and say, now I'm worthy of your love. No. You didn't have to win another trophy. You didn't have to bring home another participation award. You didn't have to do anything because the Lord is on your side. He promised you that. He promised he's on your side. And so I just stopped by here just to remind you the Lord is on your side. He is your cheerleader. He is your healer. He is your savior. He has not forgotten about you. And he promises, I will never leave you nor ever forsake you. This is the promise our Lord makes to us. Well, imagine that as you are sitting right now in your pew or in your seat or wherever you're at, listening to this sermon, believe this. Open your heart. Open your life. The Holy Spirit is nudging you to believe these words again afresh and anew. The Spirit is nudging you. I am on your side. Hold that. Believe that. Because it's true. That your only comfort in life and death. Hallelujah. That you're not your own. That you belong body and soul. Life and in death. To our faithful Savior. Your Savior. Jesus Christ, that not a hair can fall from your head without him knowing about it. That even during those times when you feel alone and depressed, uneasy and confused, even that will work for your salvation. So believe, believe we have a savior who was on our side and who is praying right now for your healing and for your forward movement in the spirit of our Lord. May God add a blessing. And may God bless you as you go forward knowing he's in your corner. Believe it. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you are on our side. Thank you that you are interceding for us in the very throne room of God. Help us, Lord, to rest in you and to know in our deepest being that you alone are mighty to save. 
And for any who may be hearing this message this morning, Lord, who have not come to the point of trusting in you or accepting Jesus as their Savior, we pray that they may come to you. Lord, bring someone into their life to walk alongside them, to teach them about you, to bring them your word and your love. And may they accept you as their Savior and Lord, so that they too may have an advocate before our Father in Heaven. We pray this in the most powerful name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. You're invited once again to stand and join together in song. At this point, Pastor Reggie will bring us God's blessing. Pastor Harold's going to do that. <laughs> Dearly loved people of God, lift up your hearts to receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious. The Lord turn his face towards you, and give peace. Yet a lot of people say, Amen. TV. 